Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and I always have announcements on Tuesday so I've got two of them today and the first one is in just a couple of weeks it's going to be Valentine's Day and if you are local you live in the Columbus Ohio area we are doing Valentine's Day dinner on Tuesday night and it is a four course meal it is fabulous and it is much better to come and hang out with us on Valentine's Day than to go to a restaurant where they're overcrowded and they want you to eat fast and get out of the way so they can seat somebody else at your table the other thing is wherever you happen to live on the planet we have a Valentine's Day cookie box which is a dozen cookies uh, German no bakes chocolate peanut butter and cherry chocolate cookies so Please buy the cookies when the cookies get purchased and leave the building. I am less tempted to eat the cookies, so you can help me out by buying cookies. All right. The other thing is the next mentoring class for health professionals starts on February 20th, I think it is. And this is a six-month program where we have two classes a month, live and interactive teleconference call with between someplace 8 and 15 health professionals, give or take. And um, we work on business skills and clinical skills, uh, learning how to help people with informed medical decision making and diet and lifestyle change and all kinds of things. So if you'd like a copy of the curriculum and um, the fee schedule and all that sort of thing, or you're interested in cookies or anything else we talk about, pampopper at msn.com is my email. Send me an email and I will get information back to you. All right. Let's get into today's topic. Almost all diseases and disorders are directly or indirectly related to the gut microbiome, and this includes skin conditions like acne. Studies show that insulin signaling and several proteins and transcription factors play a role in the development of acne, particularly in adults, and these factors are influenced by the gut microbiome. So to look at this issue, researchers conducted a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial in which 20 patients with acne took either a probiotic or a placebo. They took skin biopsies from the patients both before they started taking the probiotic or, or placebo and then at the end of the treatment period. Analysis of the skin biopsies showed that subjects taking the probiotic experienced two really important changes. One was a 32% reduction in insulin-like growth factor and a 65% increase in something called FOX01 gene expression. No changes in the placebo group. Now, the significance of this, not only in terms of acne, but overall health, is that uh, is best understood if I tell you a little bit about insulin-like growth factor and also this transcription uh, protein. All right. Insulin-like growth factors one and two are proteins produced by the liver. Their primary function is to stimulate growth of cells and tissues in the body, but they have some effect on decreasing blood glucose levels, although they're far less powerful than insulin. IGF-1 is involved in cellular growth and differentiation and mediates most of the action of pituitary growth hormone. It's how babies grow into children and children grow into adults. So IGF-1 levels will peak during childhood, they'll reach peak concentration, uh, they increase during childhood, they reach peak concentration during adolescence, and then they decrease throughout the rest of a person's life. The role of IGF-1 in cancer development has been known for some time. In 2002, a study showed that higher plasma IGF-1 levels were associated with a higher incidence of prostate cancer, and higher levels of IGF-1 binding proteins were inversely associated. Other studies have shown a relationship between IGF-1 levels in breast, colorectal, lung, bone, thyroid, brain, and ovarian cancers. On the other hand, lower levels of IGF-1 levels are associated with longer survival for cancer patients. So, the good news about all of this is, if you want to keep those IGF-1 levels low, which I think the risk of cancer gives you good reason for wanting to do that, um, you change your diet. Dietary changes can lower plasma levels. Higher protein intake associated with higher plasma levels of IGF-1. Lower protein intake so, um, uh, associated with lower plasma levels. Lower incidence of cancer. Lower incidence of mortality in people under the age of 65. Other uh, studies have confirmed this. I mean, we're not citing a single study here. Lots and lots of studies showing a relationship between IGF-1 and cancer and health conditions and diet and IGF-1 levels. So, uh, and the most, the protein that is the most um, uh, associated with increasing IGF-1 levels is animal protein, particularly milk and whey protein. 
And not only do milk and whey protein increase IGF-1 levels, but they increase inflammation levels as well, which is why dairy intake is associated with so many different forms of cancer. So I could go on and on about this all day long, but I think the point that you want to get out of this is that you want to have a low IGF-1 levels, and the way to accomplish that is through diet. Now, this FOXO1 transcription uh, uh, that I talked about earlier, it's forkhead box class 01 transcription factor. How's that for a mouthful? It helps to modulate the expression of genes involved in all kinds of important functions, which include DNA damage repair, apoptosis, management of oxidative stress, cell differentiation, glucose and lipid metabolism, inflammation, and immune function. Now diet, you won't be surprised at this, also plays a very important role in um, FOXO1. Uh, higher intake of animal foods and dairy decreases F F FOXO1. So just to make sure we're clarifying here, you wanna have low levels of IGF-1, you wanna have high levels of FOXO1, FOXO1. Higher insulin levels will also lower your FOX levels as well. Um, as mentioned earlier, diet plays a role in IGF-1 levels, and the higher your IGF-1 levels go, the lower your FOXO-1 levels go to. All right? So just to summarize where we are so far to make sure you're following along, you want to have low IGF-1, high FOXO-1, um, and how you accomplish both is through diet. Diet will either keep those levels normal or change the ratio so the IGF-1 comes up, the FOX comes down, eating a lot of animal protein is basically the way that you do that. All right, so higher levels of IGF-1, lower levels of FOXO-1 contribute to the development of health conditions which include cancer, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, autoimmune disease, and the topic we started with, acne. Higher IGF-1 and lower FOX-1 leads to increases in sebum and keratin production and increased inflammation levels, and those are all things that contribute to acne. So this is why eating the right diet, normalizing the levels of those two things can help you. So back to the study using probiotics as an intervention for acne. The study showed that taking probiotics had a positive, positive effect on insulin resistance through direct changes in important markers for acne. IGF-1, FOXO-1, and correction of dysbiosis in the gut. The findings are further strengthened by previous studies which have shown that the same strain of probiotics used in this particular study were effective for improving leaky gut, a contributing factor to acne. So the bottom line is what you eat affects your gut microbiome, and the production and levels of proteins and transcription factors that affect your health in so many ways. Increasing the intake of animal foods, that idea. Decrease animal foods, increase plant foods. And what I love about this idea of using nutrition as therapy is that as this paper shows that I've written, and by the way, lots of references, all of which are attached to the article in the Health Priest Library, but what I love about using nutrition as an intervention tool is that you not only help the problem at hand. We started our discussion with acne but you address so many other conditions like cancer and diabetes at the same time. One prescription takes care of so many things. By the way, it's one of the reasons why the medical profession is not so geeked up about this. It's because there is a whole lot more profit involved in calling each of these conditions a separate name and then having drugs that teach each condition individually. So you take lots of drugs for lots of conditions instead of doing the one thing that will change the whole thing quickly for you, your whole health status quickly for you, which is to improve your diet and lifestyle habits. All right, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it. I will be back to you Thursday with more news.